From AIT Studios in Abuja, Nigeria, this is the O&N Late Show with Obiora Hilo and Mamode Akuga. Hello, good evening, and welcome to your O&M Late Show. It's another beautiful Friday night. Well, across the country, a lot of people are having fun, or they are just about going to the club. Some are going uh, to where we have some religious gatherings. That's what Friday nights are associated with. But you just discovered that there's a new culture, the O and M late show culture. I am Obiora Ilo. Glad to know you're already seated and you're part of this evening's show. Yes, uh, and I am Mamode Akuga. We are welcoming you uh, to our beautiful show uh, for this evening. Uh, well, it'll be all right. it's a very, very special edition today uh, because um, uh, unlike our usual package when we have so many guests on the show, uh, for today we're going to be taking on one heavy, heavy weight uh, on the show tonight. Uh, and um, you want us to let the cat out of the bag? Yes, uh, we should. <laughs> we should. We should. <laughs> it's uh, a man of many parts. Uh, one Nigerian, when a lot of Nigerians were running away, uh, taking their funds out of Nigeria, starting it away abroad uh, to safeguard it, one very courageous Nigerian who kept his money back home established uh, a media empire, uh, which uh, provided jobs for uh, thousands of Nigerians. And this man took a risk, just like you said, when a lot of people didn't want to take that kind of risk. Yes. Under a military regime, he wanted to give voice to Nigerians, to give them an alternative avenue to express themselves. He has done that in the last 30 years, yes. and the empire, which started in a little building somewhere in, in Alagbado, yes, in, in Lagos. 1993, is spread yeah. all over Nigeria today, uh, all and over indeed um, across and the world. And is watched all over the world. Yes. Well, well he's not a saint. Um, a lot of people have accused him of so many things. Uh, some say they don't like his politics. Some say they like his politics. Some say they love his courage. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's a man of I, many parts, uh, actually. Yes, but he's like that uh, proverbial elephant. Yeah. You talked about what you felt and what you saw from yeah. the side. From where you are standing. From where you are standing. Yes, yeah, but you have no <laughs> idea what's on the other side. Well, we're talking about uh, no other than a man many have described as a mentor. Uh, a role model, a father, a pathfinder. Yes, we are talking about our own emerit Hi. emeritus chairman. chairman of Da Communications PLC, High Chief Raymond Aleo Dokbesi, and uh, you are forgetting uh, his uh, title, PhD, UFR, <laughs> and so many others. How uh, about the traditional title? Uh, yes, the Izomo Good. of Wepawano. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure our cameras are, are, are showing you the great man. He's standing by, and uh, in a moment, he will be here to talk about his many parts, all the controversies, yes. the good, the bad. Uh, I don't uh, know if there's an ugly. Forget, I don't, don't think there's an ugly. Talking about his retirement. His retirement, as, yes, yes as that's well. the big one. He's, that's he's the fought big a good one. fight, established a wonderful empire. And then his and politics. Yes, don't forget in that too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but let's quickly just uh, take a look at what's happening okay. uh, in Nigeria, different parts. Um, well, of course, you must have heard now that, that Mr. President says that he never uh, spoke to the king of Morocco. Very nasty business, this uh, telephone conversation and the talk about uh, the King of Morocco snobbing the president. You know, Very nasty you business. You know, the APC, they, they've made, like they, the PDP is saying, a, a, a molehill uh, eh? uh, out, uh, out, out of a mountain out of a molehill. Mole <laughs> That's what they're saying. Uh, the country is embarrassed and all that. But this evening, the spokesman of the president said, the president did not speak 
to the king of okay. Morocco. Well, all those responsible for that will be brought to book. The president has directed that appropriate sanctions and punishment be meted out. And uh, Obiora, the NLC elections, my God, I don't know. No, 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 no. no. I don't know. I mean, no, even no, no, the Nigerian no. presidential not. election <laughs> it is doesn't not, go this far. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't they, get this they've far. had these elections since, uh, they, I mean, they gathered again uh, since Thursday, uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, and they started counting the votes are done. Yes, today. and nothing has happened. The results are not out yet. Hopefully, before we conclude the program today, we just might get a call from our correspondent who is covering the NLC elections. More uh, Bernard Wilkie. That She's is standing if, by. Yes, well, she just updated us that the place has erupted in violence. There's fighting amongst. Uh, the different uh, supporters of the candidates, and nobody knows exactly what the situation is uh, out there. This was like uh, 20, 15 minutes ago. So she will uh, be able to update us, uh, hopefully, before we run out of the program today. And Obiora, also uh, the immigration exercise, the president, a man of his word, did promise employment to uh, some of the and some injured, money, and some money, money to the families. Yes. I was going to say a happy ending to a sad event, but I don't know if there will be ever, ever be a happy ending to this. The there president yeah. has uh, disbursed about 75 million to the families, each family getting about 5 million. Yeah. And then there's employment for some. The employment letters uh, were for, given out. For three, uh, yes. three members of each of the of families, families that yes. lost someone at that um, yeah. immigration debacle. Two things to quickly draw from this. Number one, the president has kept his promise uh, to, and has done what he said he will do for the families. Hopefully, that should uh, suit the families a little bit. And secondly, this must never happen again. Again. So if they're going to have any, uh, any, yeah, any employment yeah. exercise, we must be able uh, to take care of this. The Abuja and Division finally, yeah. of the Appeal Court uh, has stopped the execution of the death sentence that was passed on two of the 12 Nigerian soldiers who were convicted um, last year by a military, military court-martial over the alleged complicity in acts of mutiny. The soldiers were on September 15, 2014, condemned to death. You remember yes, of that course. the appeal court is stopping it for now. I don't know and whether uh, the, 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 the other parties will want to take it to the Supreme uh, Court. Well, uh, it remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, finally, uh, our last report for the day, um, Nigerian troops have discovered a bomb-making factory in Yobe State. This was discovered uh, during a, a cordon and search uh, conducted by Nigerian troops in Buni Yadi, which by local government area of Yobe State. So many uh, victories recorded against Boko Haram. Mm. Well, uh, that's uh, information uh, from across Nigeria. Are, are we mm. forgetting that ISIS said they, uh, they've accepted <laughs> the pledge of Boko Haram to be an ally? An ally of, well. So terror has become a network well Obiara, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately yes unfortunately but, uh, i'm sure the nigerian troops uh, will continue to record those victories and that will soon be a thing of the past but very shortly we'll go into uh, our interview uh, for tonight uh, don't go away high chief is already in the studios with us when we come back we'll talk to high chief raymond aleogo dopacy don't go away Lots of animal come in here. Okay. Get rubbish out. Okay. All rubbish. Ah, from Mr. Bromley. Wakari mask. I must tell you, this most dangerous Eight. snake. Eight. No, 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 no. This no, one, no. he did not I... like this snake, but we convinced him to come back. Let, now, let me tell you. Ooh. This most dangerous snake in Africa, okay? This snake, he bite you. You die. Not yesterday, to die. You die. Ah, so, let me show you to do some wakari maska for me here. Snake hunter was taking snakes out of cage and hiding them away and locked on. <laughs> Fucking 
Then I... Oh, what is wrong? For our next victims, we installed a treadmill that we could start up by remote control, as well as various other booby traps. Okay, thank you. Welcome back and now to Brass Tax. Joining us now the Chairman Emeritus of Dark Communications PLC, High Chief Raymond Aleogo Dopesi. Hi, Chief, you're welcome. <laughs> the Ezomo. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey. Uh, so, how is retirement? People say, you're always talking about retiring, but you never get to retire. Well, I have you retired that, now? I don't think that there was any time I was supposed to have retired uh, before now. Uh, I think uh, I made public my decision to retire sometime in November last year, and uh, I've been enjoying my retirement. I think that I've not been able to come to your offices. I think I came for a board meeting only once since November. And I've not participated actively in any issues or matters that concern dark complications as it were. So for me, I say it's been a lot of fun outside the pressures, stress of being chairman of a conglomerate, calls from all sides, uh, it's been quite peaceful for me. I thank Almighty God for that. Any possibility of recalling you back into active uh, participation in the business? No. After all, you are just uh, about 64. Uh, coincidentally, I think I'm done. I've taken a bow, and uh, uh, it is time to really face other challenges and not the dark complications uh, issues alone now. OK. Um we remember the little building in Alagbado, um, 93, 94. And today, a dream that you started is all over the world, all over Nigeria. In, this, in your retirement, how do you feel? Is there a fulfillment, sense of fulfillment? Or you think it's work in progress? Let me say, I give my Thanks to Almighty God, first and foremost. I need to thank all Nigerians. I need to thank the entire members of staff who had faith and confidence in my, in my vision and in my determination to translate a dream into reality. It has been a long journey, but a journey which I'm sure uh, the members of staff, the Nigerian populace, can really see the outcome and effect that it is possible for Nigerians to attain any goal they put their minds to. Okay. Now, let's um, take uh, a leave of the issues with dark communications involvement. You have uh, decided to take on um, national issues um, from the time that you decided to, you know, uh, push for the pressure group, the South-South People's Assembly, and then you got very directly involved in politics, um, you know, as Director General for the Odili campaign, the Babangida campaign, uh, and now 
Uh, there are people who even say that um, even with the Jonathan campaign that you are the hand, the hand behind, uh, the invisible hand that uh, nobody sees really that's, you know, walking the clock and directing things. Uh, is this true? Um, what's your interest now in national politics? Well, let me say very categorically that yes, I played I was the pioneer chairman of the South South People's Assembly. Uh, we gave life to the agitation and request of the people of South South to have a president of, uh, of uh, South South Extraction, but a Nigerian president of South South Extraction. And uh, as things came up, we couldn't get the president, the office of president at that time. We were only able to get vice president. But the vice president uh, thereafter became acting president, president, and uh, is done its own uh, uh, four years in office as president, and is now seeking re-election for another four years. And uh, the appeal of the people of the South South the appeal of well-meaning Nigerians across board is that four years is not too much in the life of a nation. And if we are to bring about unity, stability, and continuity in this country, that it is necessary to give President Jonathan the opportunity to serve out the four years that is outstanding in it. And I'm very much committed to that movement. Uh, as being, as it has been, uh, the hand behind the campaigns, I think people will be crediting me with too much. It is not true. Uh, there's a presidential campaign council, which I'm not a member of. I, I, I don't know the direction of the campaigns as it were, uh, to so strictly speak, but I, I'm desirous, I'm committed to giving support and assistance to every uh, state of the country, to every, uh, every voter in any part of the country that I feel that is marginalized and I could contribute something to resolving their uh, issues and so on, I make myself available. And I, do, I don't think that uh, I need to be a member of any presidential com campaign committee or to be a member of any committee before I render my services in, in attainment of the goal that I have stated that I have uh, right now to get President Jonathan re-elected for the second term on the basis of justice, fairness, and equity. The Southwest has produced the president. The North had always had a president uh, who have had second term, truncated at one stage or the other. Uh, even General Ibrahim Babangida had two terms. If we had to go by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Obasanjo had two terms. Uh, why not Jonathan? Why should the South South, because they are minority, be denied that opportunity? Let us not plant the seed that uh, will be problematic in future. Let us carefully deal with this matter. Four years is not too much in the life of, of the nation. All of us can come together and then work out the structure of government that will be effective. And I think the President himself, during the peace. Uh, Accord meeting uh, made it very clear that he strongly believes that the N Nigeria, uh, where we have gotten to right now, there should be rather a government of national unity, a government where all parties who have participated, 48%, uh, 40% of the votes of voters cannot be discarded in setting up government. They should have their representatives in government. All of us can come together and build a solid, proper nation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think anybody uh, has a grouse with you that you are supporting uh, President Jonathan and working hard for his re-election. But there a number of Nigerians, especially those that are not supporters of President Jonathan, has accused you of using your conglomerate, your media conglomerate, in a biased way to support the president. Well, I think they, are, they will be speaking largely from a position of ignorance, from a position of not appreciating and understanding how that complications is structured and the way and manner 
they have it operates. My attention was uh, was clearly drawn to the documentary uh, about the real Buhari and the recent documentary uh, on uh, the Lion of Bodilon. Uh, these are two uh, very strong documentaries, in my opinion. If we take the first one, the real Buhari, uh, I want to commend and doff my heart for the staff of the programs department for painstakingly going through the content and reviewing and trying to verify every aspect of the of that documentary. It is the real man, Buhari. So it is the life and times of Buhari. It's a documentary on him. And I opened Wikipedia. I checked the facts. I was old enough. I had already had PhD for over 10 years at the time Buhari came in. And I was, uh, I compared the facts and the realities right down there. And I know that a lot of the younger generation who, he, who stopped reading or being taught history, that they were not, they were not in, they didn't know most of these facts. And they needed to be educated because they are going to cast their faults. One of the major things that inspired me at that time to set up Ray Power was the fact that there was dearth of information in the local areas and so on. And people did not, they were depending on their sons and daughters who were coming with biased views. So if these are the people who are supposed to come up to come and vote, they needed to be given all the information from all sides. And that documentary, I stand by the fact that there is nothing that is wrong with it. Did in you terms fund of the documentary? No, it was a sponsored documentary. It was sponsored. And, but then uh, the programs department of AIT, before putting it up, needs to do due diligence and so on. And by the time I heard about the outcome, that one, I discovered that there were people that were entrenched in APC, the people that didn't want the truth to be told, that were coming up. I personally, I was detained by Buhari in 1983 for when, he, he, when he seized power. In spite of the fact that I had the privilege and honor of receiving him and his delegation in Yola, entertained them and so on. But that is not what is important here now. What is very important is whether that documentary was biased or was meant, was a campaign of hate or it was meant to tarnish the image of uh, uh, General Buhari. But the truth of the matter is that it is a factual history. It's a factual story of the things and so on. If there is any element of that documentary that anybody says is not true on that one, I want to be shown that section and that part. Now, to the, uh, Lion, of the Lion of Bodulum, I, I, I must first and foremost say that uh, Senator Bola Tinumbu is my very close friend. We have very close uh, family ties. I don't have any reason to want to uh, run him down or tarnish uh, his image. But again, this is a, dom a documentary based on facts. He has raised objections about the sections that, uh, about the United States of America, uh, where he said to uh, $460,000 to have been confiscated and so on. Well, we have been to the United States. We have even a recording of the judge who passed the sentence, and the documents are there. So that I looked at it and I said, factually, is there any part of this documentary that is politically motivated? Are there, are there confirmations to them? And again, I had no choice but uh, doff my heart once again for the people in the programs department of their communications. And it came on, it is on to run him down, but the public, any person who says he wants to hold public office must be ready to expose himself, beer, and tell them because the assets and resources of this but, country but, uh, will be run by these people. But, but, but High Chief, they say Tinubu is not interested, is not contesting for any office. No, but it's, it's just a, a leader, uh, a, a, a stalwart of the APC. No, 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 no. Uh, you can't, it, it's, it's, it cannot be seen in that perspective <coughs> for I don't know what the intentions of what the intentions of the 
authors of the documentary the may have been. But definitely, he is a prominent person that will play a prominent role in the government that is going to be set up. He's the leader of the party. And therefore, his vision, his understanding, his character will come to bear on the government that is coming up. Then, uh, I think it was yesterday or today, my attention was drawn to the fact that, oh, uh, there's a documentary on the vice presidential uh, candidate of uh, uh, Professor APC, Oshibajo, yes. uh, Professor Oshibajo, that AIT, all bullshit. Uh, there's nothing of that nature that ever happened. It was it's just a panic measure, and which clearly shows <coughs> that there is there's something already in the pipeline. I'm not aware of any documentary coming in, and I'm sure that that complications has run every other material that APC has brought as long as they meet the okay. distance. So let, they, have let, fair, let, they have been fair, let, they have been fair, and they have been balanced. Let me, let me ask you. <laughs> yes, you must have seen this yourself, uh, and I'm going to ask you very pointedly. Yeah. The, there's allegation, it's in the social media, that you collected the sum of 10 billion to be able to influence your programs department uh, to accept these materials and, and run down the and, NPC's and, candidates. and air them uh, on the station. Is this well, true? Well, let me tell you that uh, I coincidentally was a member of staff of, I was a director in the Federal Ministry of Transport, and Umaru Diko was my minister. And Umaru Diko said that if they say you have, <coughs> you've collected this amount, you just say, Almighty God, don't deny. Say, Almighty God, let this money <laughs> come so that you can do this. Well, that is arrant nonsense. I don't know who would have provided 10 billion naira. I've not even gotten a single cent. And the people in the programs department are living witnesses of the fact that uh, even the accounts of that complications would have been able to see whether there was 10 billion or this thing. This is propaganda and uh, messages passed out by the opposition to discredit uh, AIT and for people to lose confidence or distrust whatever is coming out. So it is deliberate. It is part of the propaganda of APC and its people. Okay, hi Chief. Let's take um, our cameras to the streets for you to hear what people are saying about this organization you founded and how they, they react to some of the things that are happening now. Let's take uh, our cameras to the street now. AIT as the media outfits, they are just playing their role, you understand? The most important thing as a media outfit is actually to get the masses informed about the political happenings. As a media, they are supposed to do, AIT is supposed to do what will bring development and unity to the country. AIT is not a biased organization for me. All AIT do currently is to campaign for PDP, show us fake propaganda this thing against uh, Buhari and uh, Tinibu, of which is very, very unfair. I will raise AIT balance in their reportage about the political situation in this country. Okay. In this political time, AIT are playing a vital role because they are contacting people to for their views in terms of political issues. With AIT, they are playing a very good political role for people to enlighten people what is going in the country. Look as if the AIT itself is been is now NTA. Nobody rely on AIT, honestly. It's just like it's been bought by the government, it's owned by the government. So truly, we don't I don't think we have any other local channel that will rely on. AIT, they are biased in time of this present political distance. You see, sometimes we speak out of ignorance. And it is good that you mention it. Some of these things are sponsored programs. And some people fail to believe that AIT is just a media. They have been doing a very good work. And I really disagree with the comment that uh, my colleagues here and my friends here have been saying that the AIT have been uh, taking sides. So to me, I see that they are very, very impartial. The world, the history they are bringing is for we, that is young ones, that never know what happened last time. For we to recall our mind, to know who to vote. They are not forcing you to vote PDP. They are not forcing you to vote APC. I can't really blame AIT. As far as the NBC is not saying it's, not, it's wrong, you understand? Nobody should just, I believe, we should just take it like that.
Well, uh, Hi Chief, uh, those are the comments. Maybe some of them support what you are saying, but some are still accusing this organization of bias. Have you contributed in any way to the public feeling the way they are feeling? Well, let me, let me state the fact that there are two different as, uh, segments. Uh, if you are talking about news reportage, there's no doubt whatsoever that AIT News Department has enjoyed unfettered freedom and that they have, they report, they are balanced in their reportage. If it comes to programs content, there is no doubt whatsoever that the officers in programs department carry out due diligence to w whether there are materials that are produced from outside and especially those that are produced from outside come through, if they are advertorials, they go through APCON for approvals. They come through the scrutiny of the programs department and if, they, if need be, the management, the top level management of dark communications will have to take those decisions. It is very clear, and you are aware of it, that since 1999, if I am, if I am involved in any election, I go on sabbatica and I don't step the premises of dark complications for the entire period of the election until a new person is sworn in. So as to ensure that there, there's unfettered uh, position, unfettered discharge of duties by the officers without any, without me breathing over them or influencing what is happening. The people that, you see, there are people that are fanatically attached to the political parties. What that communications is supposed to do is to provide information. So if anybody says there is an information which is factually wrong, then I think they have a right of reply, and that reply is and so on. Uh, Alaji Bolatinumbu was very, very, he, he behaved like a matured politician. When the documentary was on, his lawyers wrote, they said, look, we believe that so-and-so -so -and -so sections are not very correct. And that communications uh, programs department said they are sure. So when he sued for 20 billion, that communications people said, we are suing for 100 billion for trying to bias people's minds against us. So uh, that will be proven and trashed out in court. That is okay. a process. But what is not acceptable, and I dare say so, is the sitting by the national as um, the House of Representatives very recently on the issue on the on the performance or the activities of the media houses. The National Assembly cannot cannot censor what is coming out. The presidency cannot censor what is coming out from any of the media houses. But the National uh, Broadcasting Commission cannot censor. The editorial de decision is left to an indivi the individual stations. It is not new. But they have control. They are regulators. No. What they regulate, they, doesn't, they, they cannot regulate content. They cannot, they cannot regulate. Not? No. They cannot regulate editorial content. What they can is just they prepare the regulations on age. Say, this movie cannot run, it's adult movie, it can come at about this time. But the content of what I am transmitting, they don't have the powers and they don't have the right to do so. That is what they call the Fifth Amendment in the United States. In every yes. democracy, you allow the media, the media have the responsibility to scrutinize any person that is coming to, to hold public office. Because it is, what we are doing is that we are all collectively handing over our rights, handing over our destinies to these people that are elected to manage our destinies on our behalf. And therefore, we must know. We must know them in full. Have you not had in the United States where somebody is coming out to, to run for an office and they said he dated a lady when he was married and for that reason he is forced to go out? Does it not happen? Uh, of in course the UK, it does. Everywhere, it does not happen. So the people must be informed. They must be aware of the background of the people that are coming up. Their temperament. Are they capable of withstanding stress? Are they healthy enough to be able to carry uh, the, 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 the challenges of the office of president or whichever office they are running for? Do they have the know-how? 
it was one stage to say, look, let us have presidential debates so that we can sample, we can have information yeah. on what they are thinking is, how we can solve our most important national issues. So you want to be able to discuss these ones very openly. So also must you, must you also discuss the persons, what is their pedigree, what is their antecedent, how, how have they behaved. In this particular case, we've had an opportunity of having uh, about two years of Buhari's uh, stay as head of state, and we have experienced uh, Jonathan uh, four years as president of the nation. And therefore, we, there's a basis of comparing how did they handle our national issues at that time? Uh, how did Buhari handle it when he was head of state? How did this other person handle it and so on? What about the human rights abuses? What about, what about economic development? But, what about... Uh, yeah. uh, Yes, but actually, when you were talking about uh, President Jonathan and the, your desire, your support for him, your desire to see him re-elected, you, you went back a little bit into time to recall, you know, uh, the presidency as was being occupied by people from different parts of the country, the Southwest, and you made mention of the fact that they had eight years each in the zones. So for me, it looked like you believed more that you know, if it was within your zone, you also have a right to have it for eight years. But High Chief, um, where is merit in, in, the, in, in the placement of, you know, running of a nation for you? There is, there is quite a lot of merit. Let me, let me just cite. I was a director in the Federal Ministry of Transport up to 1981 uh, when I left, I, I, I left service. And I'm aware that by 1981, President Sheikh Ushagari had approved a master plan for standard gauge to link the whole country, and which was supposed to be implemented over 20 years. It was to cost 30 billion naira at 1.5 billion naira per annum. It was President, it was a General Buhari when he was head of state that cancelled that. And Jonathan is coming back after this long number of years to be, so I, I want to look at his performance. I want to look at his performance in saying that, look, there was mass transit in Lagos that was uh, this thing. It was President, it was General Muhammad Buhari who asked Mudashiru to cancel that project, which was already embarked upon. Which mass transportation. <coughs> mass, mass, tra mass transit uh, movement uh, by uh, train. Yes. Now, I want to look at the sectors of industry. Jonathan is encouraging industrialization, development. By the special grace of God, we are going to be looking, taking headlong the issue of resuscitation of Ajankuta Stirolimi. Who stopped it? Who stopped? After almost 80, 90 percent of the materials had already been gotten. And that is the, for, the basis of our district. We want Ajankuta back. We want employment for our people. We want this country to start developing the, th the things that are required. But what did we do at that time? We went on butter trade, buy and sell it, because it benefited certain persons. So I, I want to look at the health sector. What, how was the health sector? How did it perform during those two years? How did it perform during Jonathan's uh, uh, present moment? How is, I'm a, journal, I'm a journalist. The freedom of expression, how was it guaranteed? Who brought about decree two? Who signed Freedom of Information Act? <coughs> so I, I want to look, up, I mean, I'm uh, in projecting, I've lived my life. I'm looking at what the children that I have, which type of Nigeria will we be bequeathing to them? Who is in a better position to provide the enabling environment for them to be able to go? Hi, to Chief. Go. You seem only to see the positives for Jonathan. You're not looking at the negatives. Please tell me about the negatives. I believe that. See, <laughs> I, I, I'm the very first person. Uh, when I was making my opening remarks just yes. now, I said, look, here I am. In 1983, I was, I was arrested and kept at 15 Awolo Road for about 33 days. Offense, I held political office. Uh, President Jonathan also came in by, uh, uh, in 2010, they said I bombed Abuja. I was also arrested and kept in SSS uh, detention, uh, but here we are. They investigated there, and I was released. But I would have faced the gallows under Buhari. 
So I, I don't know what you are saying. Some I'm, people, look, I'm some comparing no, some the people have. So I'm not saying, chief, some I'm people not have said. I'm not saying Jonathan's government has been perfect in no, no. this thing. Some people they have may, said, for, have for, in, some mistakes, for instance, but they are not mistakes that are comparable with the successes they have achieved. Hi, chief. Some people said, for instance, when Nigeria was threatened while Buhari was in power, he took care and quelled that insurgency. Under President Jonathan, we've had insurgency, even though today a lot has been achieved, but we have had it for so long that a lot of people, I mean, were really wondering whether Mr. President was doing what he was supposed to be doing. People have said that we've spent so much in power. Ob and in Abuja, in a lot of places in Abuja today, you may not have up to 12 hours of electricity. Obiora. Are you not talking about those, High Chief? Obiora, let me tell you very, uh, let me answer you very shortly. I'm a shipbuilder. That's my original profession yes. before I straight into broadcasting. And I'm very clear that from the day you place an order for a vessel and until the day you are able to take it out for test run for the first time is a minimum of three to five years, depending on the how sophisticated the vessel is. Yes. And if you want to look at Nigeria's history, Nigeria stopped purchasing any serious military armaments, uh, aircrafts, bullets, all those this thing, throughout the period of the military regime, from 1983, which was President Sheikh Ushagari that really acquired the last batch. And what we had been doing, it was just lip service, because we were afraid that coups should not be carried out by the military boys. When in 1999, Obasanjo came, General Dan Juma, as Minister of Defense, uh, re retired the political soldiers. That is, those that were capable of carrying out coups and that one, they were all phased out. But there was no purchase of armaments. And a president will not come out and tell the neighbors who have, who have been supported and have new armaments that, look, my country, I'm sorry, we don't have this thing. They placed the order. The equipment have come in right now. It takes about three to five years, just as it takes to build a vessel, so does it take to build an aircraft. And the, those uh, items have arrived now. President Jonathan did not hold back because it was insensitive, because it was, but simply because successive administrations before now did not provide the wherewithal to be able to have those armaments to be able to fight this war. And mind you, when you are saying that, oh, General Buhari, uh, uh, that he fought insurgency, he went into charge, and so on, uh, oh, they had to recall him back. All those are stories. You never have one? It never happened? No, I, I mean, he, he went, he, he, was, he was GOC. He was GOC uh, in, in charge of that area, and he tried to quell the insurgency. But I'm telling you that if he became head of state, if he becomes, at the time that they wanted to, that they were all clamoring, if election had held at that time, this new amendments would have come in, and you would have had a different propaganda that, oh, it is because the Buhari had come in, that is why. But this six weeks gap has given uh, Nigeria and Jonathan the, the ability, the possibility to remain a united country to be able to deal squarely with the Hi, issue. Jim, let's talk about corruption. So let's talk about corruption. Let's, let's talk about corruption. Before we go there. Let me draw your attention to there. the fact mm -hmm. that the EFCC itself, ICPC, have made it very clear that they have gotten more judgments, people more jailed for corruption during Jonathan's administration than any other time in Nigeria. Mind you, corruption was the cause of the military of the coup in 1966. Corruption has been on ever before Jonathan came in. And you won't be expecting Jonathan to all of a sudden, over four years period, to wipe out totally. There is nobody that has been charged for corruption that Jonathan is not prosecuting today, that the EFCC and ICPC are not dealing with. But he's not fighting corruption. In getting people created into boxes and bringing them, my minister, Omar Dico, as it was attempted by some other persons. No, that was a military. That was a military. No, that was a military. No, high chief. High chief. Leopard does not change his skin. Leopard does not. I, Raymond Dupassi, the things I stand for and I stand by today, you can't change me. You can't change me from there. All right, let's 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 talk about something very fundamental that will likely change Nigeria. No doubt. I mean, anybody can see that you you believe in in President Jonathan's second term. Now, you were uh, nominated into the Constitutional Conference, yeah. and you participated in it. And for a lot of people, in fact, uh, for the Afene Fere people, the Southwest, uh, they say they want to support Jonathan because they feel that the report from that conference uh, will restructure Nigeria for them 
And that is the reason why they want to uh, be able to uh, vote uh, President Jonathan. Now, that report, uh, somebody who has so much support for President Jonathan, uh, for you, you want to see that report implemented. Do you believe that what we are hearing from President Jonathan is not political statement merely to capture votes? Is that, will that report and eventual restructuring of Nigeria happen? Well, let me correct the impression that uh, the Southwest uh, uh, pledged their support for uh, uh, President Jonathan only because they no, think that... That's what they are very very No, no, no. no. Yes. See, the restructuring of Nigeria, the implementation of that is for the benefit of the whole of Nigeria, not for the benefit of Southwest alone. The Southwest are championing is for the good of Nigeria. I believe that the issues, what ought to have been campaign issues, were discussed by Nigerians brought together and without dissension, they agreed and passed every aspect of it. There are problems and challenges of, of the minority people in the South, minority people in the North, and the challenges of industrialization, the uh, agriculture, agricultural transformation. Every aspect of our life was looked at in detail in that report, and it stands a basis of moving this country forward very strong and very passionate about the fact that Ajakuta Sea Rolling Mill is as an opportunity to be resuscitated, to create employment for us to get industrialized in this country. Belated, but yet we are able to lay the foundation, that we are able to take, uh, uh, take those type of technologies that is ready, that is necessary to lift up this country from the levels to, from which we understand them. That report is very important and, and I'm sure those that didn't participate in it cannot say they want to be able to they will implement it. In point of fact, I will say that Nigeria will remain in absolute darkness if we do not choose the person that is that set up that body that knows about the content and is willing and determined to see the implementation of that report. Okay. Well, uh, Chairman, you're so passionate about this matter. Let's step it down a little bit. <laughs> so that we can end this conversation. Yeah, we, don't have any, <laughs> we don't have time again. We have to go. Um, you pioneered private broadcasting. You have retired from broadcasting. How do you see broadcasting in future in Nigeria? And, and, and partisanship of media houses, because like you talked about the Fifth, Fifth Amendment, in the United States, for instance, media houses are allowed to be partisan. You, so you can say- But they have instance, to declare it. Yeah, they have they to have declare. To, they for have instance, to make it open. Uh, Fox is Republican. They don't make no apologies for it. No, when, when do you see that happening in Nigeria? See, we, like I have always said, broadcasting in this country is still evolving. Don't, don't forget that at the time we started, it, they, it was stated that it was a security issue, and therefore nobody except government should handle broadcasting. And I was fought to a standstill. Don't forget that this everybody can now wake up at any time, switch on the radios, or and sw uh, switch on the TV, uh, and watch 24 watch. hours. And that it was started by me. And you, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, very clear that there are, there, were, there are quite a lot of challenges. The broadcasting in this country is still developing. It will still develop. The, those that are opposed today because they are passionately attached to, they are indoctrinated because they are uh, PDP or they are APC, so they follow dogmatically without knowing what it entails, what, should, what the issues are, need to pipe down a little bit. I, I'm sure the Nigerian media has served this country very well and will continue to serve in the future very well. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you uh, so Hi much. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, th I think, I think, uh, I think it has to come back some, uh, sometime again. Uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> after the elections, hopefully. <laughs> Hi, Chief. It's a pleasure to uh, present to you. This should now be your uh, coffee mug uh, on your table every morning. Uh, I'm sure that uh, we will also inform Madame to ensure that, that, uh, that he uses it. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Chief. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. And that's... Um, our package. We hope <laughs> you enjoyed it. Yeah. I am Obiora Ilo from Abuja, Nigeria. Don't forget you can watch this show again or our other shows on hblnews.com. 
All right, and I am Mahmoud Akua thanking you for being with us this Friday night. Of course, Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m., we'll all be here to do it once again. Bye for now, and have a good night. Good night.